The Nazis invaded the Netherlands in 1940. Jews were arrested and sent to concentration camps. Corrie and Betsy were Christians, and they decided to help as many Jews as they could. We were two middle-aged unmarried women, and somehow we were running an underground operation to help Jews. We lived in a tall and unusual house above our watchshop, and we built a secret room where Jews could hide when soldiers came to the house. Corrie and Betsy developed a code for telephone calls to the Dutch resistance to help smuggle Jews to safety. We would say, we have a woman watch that needs repairing, which meant a Jewish woman needed a hiding place, but we couldn't find one among our usual contacts. For nearly four years, Corrie and Betsy helped around 800 Jews escape. Then, one day, they were betrayed by an informant and arrested. My family sent a letter, and underneath the stamp were the words, all the watches in our closet are free. So I knew that the Jews we helped were safe, and the Nazis hadn't found them. There was a great joy to Betsy and me. Corrie and Betsy were taken to a German concentration camp called Ravensbrück. Roll call was at 3.30 a.m. The sisters had watery soup once a day and worked long hours. Our barracks were overrun with fleas. They were everywhere, in our mattresses or clothes. But Betsy reminded me of a Bible verse that says, give thanks in all circumstances. So we would even thank God for the fleas. God helped Corrie and Betsy smuggle a Bible into the camp, and the two sisters started Bible studies and held secret services. The guards never came in because there were so many fleas. God helped us tell so many prisoners about his love that is stronger than the evil in Ravensbrück. Betsy became very weak and sick, yet she encouraged Corrie to keep asking God for help. She told me of her dream to set up a home for all those who needed help after the war. Betsy died in December 1944, and Corrie was unexpectedly released two weeks later. After her recovery, Corrie opened Betsy's dream rehabilitation home to help camp survivors. The biggest challenge came after church one Sunday, where Corrie had spoken about forgiveness. I recognized a guard from Ravensbrück, but he didn't remember me. He said, how grateful I am for your message, Fraulein, to think that, as you say, Jesus has washed my sin away. And I, who had spoken so often about forgiveness, felt angry. But I knew Jesus had died for this man. I prayed, Jesus forgive me. I cannot forgive him. Please help me. And he answered my prayer and help me forgive this man. Cory spent nearly three decades traveling around the world, writing books and speaking about God's help to forgive even the darkest of evils. <laughs> 